This week, Pope Francis leads priests on retreat. How can you ask the Pope a question? And what impact does the pontiff have on young people? Hello and welcome to another edition of Vatican Connections. We know that Pope Francis is going to Sweden at the end of October to mark the 500th anniversary of the Reformation. We know now that it will actually be a two-day trip. The first day will include a liturgy in the city of Lund, specifically at the Lutheran Cathedral. Lund is the headquarters of the Lutheran World Federation. The second day will include a Mass at the arena in the city of Malmo. The two cities are actually not very far apart, just under 30 kilometers or less than 18 miles away from each other. So that's just under a half hour car ride. Now the full itinerary for the Pope's visit to Sweden will be released closer to the date of the trip. Do you know a young person who is just itching to ask Pope Francis a question? Well now there is a way. By logging on to the website askpopefrancis.scolasocurrentes.org, they can post a question to the Holy Father. Those questions will be collected and some of them will be answered in a book that will be published in just a few months. And we are now two months away from the start of World Youth Day Krakow. Here is the latest from the local organizing committee on what you'll see in Krakow and what's been going on this week. Jordan Park was established in the late 1800s as the first public playground in Krakow and one of the first of its kind in Europe. It is located next to Borja Park, which is the site of the opening mass, the welcoming ceremony of the Pope, and the Way of the Cross. Jordan Park will be open to all pilgrims, for it is one of the places where the confessionals will be held for World Youth Day. Now let's see the news for this week. The pilgrimage with the World Youth Day symbols, the cross and the icon of Our Lady, began in the Archdiocese of Krakow and will last until World Youth Day events. The pilgrimage of the World Youth Day symbols started with the ceremonial inauguration on May 20th in the Sanctuary of St. John Paul II. The symbols were present during the official For Us and for the Whole World retreat at the Sanctuary of Divine Mercy in Wagafniki. Young people from various communities also carried them during the time of the traditional Corpus Christi procession. And for the first time, the cross and the icon visited Morski Oko, located in the Tatra Mountains. During the pilgrimage, the symbols will visit 45 deaneries, around 200 churches and chapels, 50 schools, over a dozen hospitals, as well as prisons and correctional facilities in the whole archdiocese. Pope Francis is not shy by any means at all, especially when it comes to young people. In fact, you could probably say that he is the world's youngest 79-year-old man. His meetings with youth are gatherings to remember, no matter where they take place in the world. Let's take a look. <laughs> La objetividad de la vida tiene que entrar la capacidad de soñar. Y un joven que no es capaz de soñar está clausurado en sí mismo, está cerrado en sí mismo. Claro, uno a veces sueña cosas que nunca van a suceder, pero soñalas, desealas. Busca horizontes, abrite, abrite a cosas grandes. Soñá que el mundo con vos puede ser distinto. Soñá que si vos pones lo mejor de vos, vas a ayudar a que ese mundo sea distinto. No se olviden, sueñen. 
y cuenten sus sueños, cuenten, hablen de las cosas grandes que desean. Porque cuanto más grande es la capacidad de soñar y la vida te deja a mitad camino, más camino has recorrido. Así que primero, soñar. Now, put them in a different country or a different context and the message is just as powerful. This great gathering of Asian young people also allows us to see something of what the church herself is meant to be in God's eternal plan. Together with young people everywhere, you want to help build a world that we are live together in peace and friendship, overcoming barriers, healing divisions, rejecting violence and prejudice. How distant the spirit of the world seems from that magnificent vision and plan. How often the seed of goodness and hope which we try to sow seem to be choked by weeds of selfishness, hostility, and injustice, not only all around us, but also in our own hearts. We are troubled by the growing gap in our societies between rich and poor. We see signs of idolatry of wealth, power, and pleasure, which come at a high cost of human lives. Closer to home, so many of our own friends and contemporaries, even in the midst of immense material prosperity, are suffering from the spiritual poverty, loneliness, and quiet despair. God seems to be removed for the picture. Yet, this in the world into which you are called to go forth and be a witness to the gospel of hope, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and the promise of his kingdom, the gospel Teach us that the Spirit of Jesus can bring new life to every human heart and can transform every situation, even the most apparently hopeless. This is the message which you are cool to share with your contemporaries at school, in the workplace, your families, your universities, and your communities. Because Jesus rose from the dead, we know that this, we know that he has the word of eternal life, that his word has the power to touch every heart, to conquer evil with war, and to change and redeem the world. Of course, today it's not as important to be physically in the same place with the person or the people you want to speak to. Pope Francis has embraced these new ways of connecting and he tries to show how technology can be used to build bridges. Voy a hacer unas preguntas 
no se ponga nervioso. Estoy de acuerdo con el concepto de la plataforma escolar y, yo, y los valores que representa. ¿Cómo se formó la idea de la plataforma escolar? Escolas surgió, iba a decir de casualidad, pero no, no fue de casualidad. Surgió de una idea de este señor que está aquí, José María del Corral. Y lo acompañó Enrique Palmeiro. Así surgió Ideas, formando una escuela de vecinos en la diócesis de Buenos Aires, además de las escuelas, una red de escuelas de vecinos para atender puentes entre las escuelas de Buenos Aires. Y tendió muchos puentes, muchos puentes, hasta puentes transoceánicos. Empezó como una cosa chiquita, como una ilusión, como algo que no sabíamos si se iba a lograr. Y hoy podemos comunicarnos. ¿Por qué? Porque estamos convencidos de que la juventud necesita comunicarse, necesita mostrar sus valores y compartir sus valores. La juventud hoy necesita tres pilares claves. Educación, deporte y cultura. So it looks like he's having fun, and it seems as if young people are thrilled to meet the Pope and hear what he has to say. But what do they really think? Here's what one group of young people had to say about their experience. I think it's really important that we young people think about the future of our church. And I think the new Pope is really approachable. He is someone who can change things, and I think we can get through to him really well with events like this. I think it's an important thing to see the head of the church. I'm really pleased that so many people are here that are interested in it and who are pleased about it. It makes you feel even better to be with other people who feel good about it. Tanti ragazzi e giovani perdono troppe ore in cose futili. Il chatare in internet o con i telefonini, le telenovelle, i prodotti del progresso tecnologico che dovrebbero semplificare e migliorare la qualità della vita e talvolta distolgono l'attenzione da quello che è realmente importante. to take a look now at what the Pope has been doing this week. On Sunday, Pope Francis had a busy day. First, he met with a group of 12 YouTubers. It was supposed to be a short meeting, but it went for about an hour, and he answered their questions, which ranged from what he felt when he was elected to questions about different types of language in communication. Now, after the meeting with the YouTubers, the Pope went into the next room the Synod Hall, where participants in the Scola Socurentes conference were waiting for him. Among the participants who were presenting different social bridge building projects were Richard Gere, Salma Hayek, and George Clooney and his wife Amal. Speaking to the participants, the Pope spoke about cruelty in the world. He showed a picture that he had been sent by a nun in Africa, and the photo was of a child who had been beheaded. He said, if this can happen in our world, if war and the killing of children can happen, then how can bullying not happen? On Monday, Pope Francis met with the heads of various Vatican dicasteries to discuss ongoing reforms to the Roman Curia. Top of the agenda was the reform 
to the Vatican's communication and media departments. On Wednesday, the Holy Father met with the members of the Institute of Genealogy. He said he was very happy that they were having a meeting about taking care of the earth. And he said, we all have a responsibility to care for the earth with tenderness and peace. And when we take care of the earth, we are also taking care of humanity. Of course, Wednesday is also the day for the Pope's general audience, and Catholic News Service has more. Non basta dunque domandarci quanto preghiamo. Dobbiamo anche chiederci come preghiamo, o meglio, com'è il nostro cuore. È importante esaminarlo per valutare i pensieri, i sentimenti ed estirpare arroganza e ipocrisia. Ma io domando, si può pregare con arroganza? No. Si può pregare con ipocrisia? No. Soltanto dobbiamo pregare davanti a Dio come noi siamo. Siamo tutti presi della frenesia del ritmo quotidiano, spesso in balia di sensazioni, frastornati, confusi. È necessario imparare a ritrovare il cammino verso il nostro cuore recuperare i valori dell'intimità e del silenzio, perché è lì che Dio ci incontra e ci parla. Soltanto a partire da lì possiamo a nostra volta incontrare gli altri e parlare con loro. On Thursday, Pope Francis spent the day with priests from around the world. He led a retreat during which he gave three meditations. Catholic News Service has details. Le persone più semplici, i peccatori, gli ammalati, gli indemoniati, sono immediatamente innalzati dal Signore, che li fa passare dall'esclusione alla piena inclusione dalla distanza alla festa. E questo non si comprende se non è in chiave di speranza, in chiave apostolica, in chiave di chi ha ricevuto misericordia per dare a sua volta misericordia. Io nel mio studio ho una bella immagine che mi ha regalato Rupnik, l'ha fatto lui, della sincatabasis. È lei che fa scendere Gesù e le mani sono come scalini. Ma quello che piace di più è che Gesù in una mano ha la pienezza della legge e con l'altra si aggrappa al manto della Madonna. Anche lui si è aggrappato al manto della Madonna. La prima antifona di Occidente è questa, Subtum Presidium, il manto della Madonna. Non avere vergogna, non fare grandi discorsi, stare lì e lasciarsi coprire, lasciarsi guardare e piangere. Quando troviamo un prete che, che è capace di questo, di andare dalla madre e piangere, con tanti peccati, io posso dire è un buon prete perché è un buon figlio, sarà un buon padre. Come sacerdoti chiediamo due grazie al buon pastore. Quella 
di lasciarci guidare dal senso sfidei del nostro popolo fedele e anche dal suo senso del povero. E entrambi i sensi sono legati al senso Christi, all'amore e alla fede che la nostra fede ha per Gesù. On Friday, Pope Francis will celebrate Mass with those priests to close off the Jubilee for priests, and on Sunday he will celebrate the canonization of two new saints. Time to take a look now at the resignations and nominations that happened this week. Archbishop Celestino Migliore has been named Papal Nuncio to Russia. Patriarch Kirill, the Russian Orthodox Patriarch of Moscow, is reportedly very pleased with the nomination because Archbishop Migliore is a seasoned diplomat and Patriarch Kirill believes this will lead to closer relations between the Russian and Roman Catholic Churches. Now, the Archbishop has already served as Nuncio to several nations and he has also been the permanent observer to the United Nations in New York. Pope Francis has named Monsignor Edward Delaman as Auxiliary Bishop of Philadelphia. He has been pastor of St. Charles Borromeo Parish since 2014. His ordination will take place on August 18th at the Cathedral of Saints Peter and Paul. Kamloops, British Columbia also has a new bishop. The current bishop, David Monroe, has reached the mandatory retirement age and his resignation was accepted by Pope Francis. To replace him, the Pope has named Father Joseph Nguyen of Vancouver. Bishop-elect Nguyen was born in Vietnam and when the communist government shut down all the Catholic institutions in that country, he fled by boat to pursue his vocation. It was a long road, but he was eventually ordained a priest in 1992 in Vancouver. He has served as a parish pastor and is currently the Vicar General of the Archdiocese of Vancouver. No date has been set yet for his ordination. Bishop Scott McCaig, the new head of Canada's military ordinariate, was ordained this week in Ottawa. The ordination took place on the Feast of the Visitation because of the new bishop's personal devotion to Our Lady. The principal consecrator was Archbishop Terence Prendergast of Ottawa, and the co-consecrators were the outgoing military bishop Donald Therio and Bishop Christian Riesbeck, the auxiliary of Ottawa. After Mass, the newly ordained bishop addressed the congregation. My mentor, my inspiration, and my spiritual father in Christ, Father Bob Bedard, the founder of the Companions of the Cross. He taught me by word, and more importantly by example, what it means to be a shepherd after God's own heart. To us, my brother companions, my sisters, the servants of the Cross, and to our associates, he gave a bold vision of life and ministry that has formed me and inspired my deepest heartfelt convictions of what Mother Church can and should be. I can only pray that I may bring to my new Episcopal mission even a small portion of that same tender fatherly care, single-hearted love for the Lord and his people, determination and fortitude, and joyful spirit-filled fire that burned in his heart. Well, that's all for this edition of Vatican Connections. Join us again next time for more. Until then, follow us on Twitter, check our website for updates, or watch us on Roku TV On Demand. From everyone here, thanks for watching. See you next time.